I was only 17. Days old when United States astronaut Neil Armstrong walked into immortality. It was the 20th of July 1969 when he descended down the steps from Apollo 11 and in doing so become the first man to walk on the moon. This time when he took those first steps and he uttered those famous words that we all know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This was a defining moment in the history of the 21st century. A moment that captured the imagination of the whole world. It was estimated that over 500 million people watched or listened to that event live. Now in 1969, there was only three and a half billion people on this planet, about half of what there is now. So that means by basic mathematics, that one in seven people stop what they are doing, put down their, their pen and pencils in the office, put down their tools in their, in their workshop and focused in on this event that was happening some 400,000 kilometres away. That was what mankind thought of space travel at that particular time. And that is what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about our fascination for space and space travel. Why is it that we have such a desire to know more about this subject and why is it that we pursue these objectives with a lot of endeavour? Well, let me tell you, there are three, there are a number of things which we are all born with. We have innate characteristics. Some of these characteristics we share amongst us. We all have them to different degrees. Well, these three of these innate characteristics which are the predominant reasons why we have this fascination with space. Now the first one is a simple thing called curiosity. Everyone I think knows what I mean by that. It's, it's what it, it is what makes us, when we're driving along the road and there's a mountain and you're looking at the mountain and at some point you'll come to your own, a question will come in your mind like, I wonder what's on the other side of that mountain. It's just something natural that happens. How is this related to space? Well, maybe it's obvious. I'm sure in the summer, a lot of you have been in the park with your friends, maybe laying in the grass, chatting, maybe having a few beers. And at some point, you'll be laying there, just not saying much, not doing much. Maybe it's the evening, or it could be the evening, and you'll be looking up at the stars, thinking, what a beautiful night. And at some point, you'll be thinking about what is out there. It's just our natural tendencies. The second innate characteristic that we all have inside of us is what is called, it's, it's called, it's not called, it's, it's a wow we moment. Now you're probably wondering what I mean by that. What I mean is that we all have this desire to do things, to build and to make things, which other people will then look at later and say, wow we, did you do that? Wow we. Now, let me explain further to, to give you some perspective meaning. Think of the Romans. Actually, think of the Egyptians, that's even better. 2,500 years ago, they created the pyramids in Giza. These huge structures, which for that, at that time in history, it was a, we think now that what an amazing achievement that was. Not only were they huge, but they've lasted, they've lasted now 3,000 years to the current day. I know that most of us here, at some point we've read or listened or said ourselves to our friends, maybe like, God, those Egyptians, were they, weren't they just amazing people? Wow, we, what did they do? You could also look further, closer to history with something like the Sistine Chapel. Who here has been to Rome and seen the Sistine Chapel? Anyone? What's your impression, Guaga? Did you have some... Tell me, did you have a... I had a wowie moment. A wowie moment, there you go. I've been there, I've seen it. The frescoes on the walls, 
the correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, the the Michelangelo the Last Supper on the ceiling. This is wow, we you just, you just can't help but be amazed by what they did at such a long time ago. It's just amazing. How does this apply to space, you may ask? Well, space travel is quite new. So we haven't had so many wow, we moments yet. But in the future, probably the International Space Station, it's, that's somewhere out there on the outer zones of space. It's sitting there accommodating tens of astronauts for years at a time. This is an amazing achievement. Perhaps the people in the future will say, those guys in the 21st and 20th century, they built that. Wow, we. The third innate characteristic, the one in here, is, our, is, is that characteristic that we all have, that is we want to be the best, we want to be first. Now a lot of you in the room today might think, well, I don't need to be the best or first, I'm happy just to sit back in the pack and not make a lot of noise or whatever, but you know, we all have a little bit of that in us. At some point in our lives, we all want to be the best and be the first. Look back to first, the first civilization 60,000 years ago when man was in Africa. At some point they decided they, they want to leave Africa and start exploring whatever was out there. Well, part of that is curiosity, which we've already covered. But there's also that inner characteristic just to get out there and be the first to explore whatever was out there. Then throughout time, every century since, there's been like, there's been achievements. There's been the guys that sailed the seven seas looking for new, new continents. There's the guys that, that these days that race to the north and the south pole just to be the first to put the flag in to say, I was the first. In the, in the 50s, near, um, who was the guy that went to the top of Everest? What was the reason he wanted to be the first to be on the top of the world? Well, in terms of space travel, maybe it's quite obvious. There's only so many things left we can do in the world these days. Most of the stuff, the easy stuff, has already been conquered. So, we have the last frontier. It's all out there for everyone to, to achieve. So those are the three main characteristics of why we have this fascination with space. I want to conclude by posing a question to everybody. Basically, I've said that these attributes are all in our DNA. It's like our birthright. But, at some point, we have to say to ourselves, do we have to, do we have a right or do, do we have, at what point do we say that we don't have to follow this dream? At what point is enough enough? There's so many resources that we put into space travel. Resources that potentially we put in other areas that we just need to sit back down and think, what are we doing? Maybe in the 60s and the 50s was a good time for space travel. Maybe it was seen as being the best thing to move man forward. But today, look at the world that we live in for crying out loud. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, 300 years ago, we've been on this, this quest to wipe out our planet, bulldozing jungles, extracting minerals like there's no tomorrow. Mother Nature cannot replenish Earth fast enough. So we need to sit that we need to, civilization needs to look in the mirror, I think, and say, we have an obligation to our future, to our next generation, to look after our planet. Do we, do we look after what we have here and try and protect it? Or do we follow our fanciful dreams up there?